Good afternoon and welcome to Institute for Veterans and Military Families IVMF's VetNet webinar. My name is Elvis Avdij and I am Post Program Support Service Advisor here at IVMF and uh, I help and assist our graduates and alumni with starting or growing their business or career ventures. Today with me, I have my colleague Ashley Squires, who is an uh, IVMF alumni, uh, alumni manager, and she'll be assisting me here today. Uh, she'll be monitoring live YouTube chat. And if you guys have any questions, please type them into live chat box, and she'll pass along to our entrepreneurship panel. And today with us, we have uh, great folks who are entrepreneurs and uh, also who are IVMF program graduates as well. So I'm gonna pass along and have them introduce themselves and we'll kick off this uh, session. Emily, why don't we start with you? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Emily Kraska. I am an Army veteran and I am the owner of the Enchanted Rose Floral Company, a wood flower company that provides alternatives to cut flowers. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Christy? Good morning, and I am Christy May of Legend Acres, and I am an Army veteran, and we offer pet services, everything from deployment boarding to service dog training. Thank you, Christy. Nick? Sorry, it took me a second to figure out how to unmute, but uh, Nick, also an Army veteran with Battlesite Technologies. We're a technology commercialization firm supporting the warfighter first responders and emergency management folks. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Otis? I think Otis is having some um, technology difficulties. We cannot hear him, but... That's okay. Uh, we'll just uh, continue with our. So, guys, tell me what IVMF program did you guys uh, finish from, and tell me a little about your business, you know, product and services that you guys offer. Nick, why don't you go with you? Yeah. So I did the uh, EBV program out at St. Joe's. And just last week wrapped up the EBV Accelerate out of LSU. Both, you know, amazing programs. You know, the EBV kind of helped provide us the foundation for the growth that we're seeing at Battlesite. And then the EBV Accelerate really helped us, you know, navigate the you know, some of the challenges we're having in the growth phase, which was amazing. Um, and then Battlesite, our first product was the Craytac, it's an infrared chemiluminescence material. So it writes in the infrared spectrum. So you can now communicate in low light, no light situations while being invisible to the enemy, but with night vision goggles. And the rest of our products are all kind of, you know, built around that same core technology of infrared, low light, no light communication. Thank you, Nick. Christy? Uh, yeah, so I, went to an EBV Accelerate program at Florida State University last fall, and that was after um, getting introduced to the IVMF at the Veteran Edge Conference uh, last year, and um, it was very helpful. I had already been in business for seven years, and finally uh, found IVMF, and it was very helpful uh, through that growth stage. We've been kind of stuck in a holding pattern in that growth stage and not really sure what I was supposed to be doing. I knew I was supposed to be doing something. And so that was very helpful uh, to be able to move our business forward. And since then, um, our business has tripled since that class last fall. And um, that has been instrumental because that allows us to assist more um, active duty military and veterans in our community in that we have expanded our business and our services over this time. Uh, we now offer more dog boarding. We've put in some more kennels, um, as well as um, hired additional lesson instructors for our um, Operation Horses for Heroes program. And we have um, added another dog trainer into our dog training program for our service dog 
program. Thank you, Christy. Awesome. Emily? Yes, I actually went to EBV at Texas A&M last summer. Um, it was a great springboard for starting my business. Um, marketing was my big problem, so it gave me a lot of tools and resources there. Um, with Wood Flowers, we do all sorts of events from weddings, corporate events, graduations, proms. It's a good alternative. Um, our mission is to hire other disabled veterans to help give them a platform to work from and hopefully springboard their own um, entrepreneurship dreams from there. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, now that we got to know you, I just, I'm just going to talk about what we're going to be doing today in this session. So today, this is a, a panel discussion. And it will be most of a Q&A dialogue style. I will, lead, I will lead the conversation with a few questions. And I would like our entrepreneurship panel to share their you know, thoughts, ideas, resources, and uh, do's and don'ts uh, with our other you know, individuals and our you know, veterans as well out there from IVMF programs. So to kick, to kick this session off, in general, we know there, there's many out there individuals who have and are great at business idea, but they have don't know how to go about starting that business idea or are too scared to start it. So thinking about like what's holding them back, you know, my question to you guys is when did you know that you had an idea worth betting everything on and what advice and resources you have that you can share with others, you know, other entrepreneurs, other veterans out there listening who are looking to start their first you know, take the first step into starting their own business. So I think the one thing is, you know, the military trained us all like that failure wasn't an option. And anybody who started a business knows that there's, you know, plenty of these small failures along the way. So you have to get comfortable with the fact that you don't know everything. You're going to make mistakes. You know, these failures aren't the end of it, right? It's just, you know, a learning lesson to go out and continue doing and executing on your business idea. Thank you, Nick. I'm going to agree with Nick on that as well. Um, there's a big learning curve, and um, go with it. Uh, you uh, you have more of the answers than you think that you do, and um, IVMF is one of those organizations that can help you sort through those. Um, and knowing that you have a good idea. And when I started, I didn't know where I was going with it. And in the end, I um, just go, you know, like I said, go go with your go with your instinct on it. You can start anywhere. And um, we started out of pocket with no financing, and we've been in business. This will be nine years, and we have never had to put a loan out to uh, do business. And uh, that's uh, one of the things that um, I, I didn't want to do. I saw my parents struggle um, with that in, um, in the past with, a, with the business. And so I knew that uh, that was one thing that I wanted to do. And IVMF uh, gave me some um, alternative resources as we grew um, to, again, not have to continue to do that. And um, there, the information is out there, and these these programs have that information and can help you sort through those um, uh, ideas and see which ones are viable and which ones, um, you know, maybe scrap or add on later. Thank you, Christy. Elizabeth, anything to add? Yes, absolutely. I would say just start somewhere. Um, my biggest hurdle to starting my business was I was too afraid to get into a market that was unknown. And I finally just took the plunge and did it. And while I don't know everything and probably will never know everything, just starting was the biggest hurdle to get over. So as veterans, we know that sometimes it's hard just to get and do something on your own without orders, but everybody can do it. Um, and then you find these resources like IVMF out there who will come alongside you and help teach you the things that you don't know. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me once I got past that hurdle was just relying on others who've been through there and done those things to help teach me and foster me along in my business. 
thank you guys uh talking about the resources and what you guys have utilized to start your business uh i would like to know what resources did you find most valuable in your entrepreneurial journey as you started your businesses and uh what resources you didn't find as valuable and what advice would you have for other individuals entrepreneurs and veterans out there who are looking for the resources to help them with starting their business and if you guys know any of the resources right now that you did not know when you were starting out and what, what are those resources and what have you what would you have done differently i'll go ahead and answer start with this um the network it's huge uh with a product that's not well known networking with people who have connections is a huge help in IVMF just set that up for us. The people who come in and speak with you, the people who run it through the colleges, just having them there to help connect you with other people they may not know of or that you may not know of is great. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there, you know, for logo design and helping you find the perfect way to finance if you do need a loan. And those are all great. But something that I think gets overlooked is the network of people that you now have access to that you might not have if you hadn't join this program. Thank you, Christy. And so to completely echo that, you know, these programs are like the military, right? You make lifelong friends. I'm in a group chat with four other gentlemen that have gone through different programs that we connected at the EDGE conference. We just hold each other accountable and, you know, we share resources and bounce things off of one another. So that's massive. And additionally, um, some of the online access tools that we get through the university have been huge. Um, you know, we're, you know, in the process of growing a business. I have no clue, like, you know, what our competitors' financials look like, but kind of getting the breakdown of, you know, where they're deploying capital so we can kind of mirror that to be competitive in the market space and make sure our rates don't get out of control. A lot of the, the technical kind of research and the access that we have to that have been massive for Battlesite. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Christy, anything to add? I um, just want to agree with um, uh, what um, everyone has already said in that um, it was the connecting of the like-minded people and finding that um, as an entrepreneur that we have day-to-day uh, -day struggles and um, finding that everybody has those and being able to talk those through with other people who have been through those experiences or going through those with you, um, it has been huge. So it really has been the network um, as well as connecting up to be able to find the answers to the questions that you have uh, through the resources of IBM, uh, IBM app, through the instructors, through the books, um, through the um, through, you know, through the classes, through the strategic planning and things that they have they've put us through have been um, been a huge help um, because for again for me my biggest thing was is I knew I was supposed to be doing something but I didn't know what those some things were supposed to be to continue to move my business forward and um, so that has been very helpful and uh, again the um, you know having those connections and uh, so um, I've made a lot of friends through the um, IVMF programs and we are accountability partners to each other um, I'll, I'll, we, we message daily um, and uh, that that's really big to have somebody else to talk to it's going through the same thing awesome thank you guys and you all of you have mentioned you know networking and conference as a huge and important part of your business startup uh, my after follow up on this my question to you guys would be what are your best practices when it comes down to networking and conferences? What advice do you have to give to others? And uh, what, you know, what are some do's and do nots, you know, when it comes to networking and conferences? I think the biggest one is like set an intention of what you want to get out of that and also have an intention of, you know, the value that you can bring to the others. Don't just run around and see how big of a stack of business cards you can get. Um, if they're just connections, they're probably not that, you know, great. If they're meaningful connections where there's exchange of value and like-mindedness, you know, you never know where those are going to lead to and what doors those are going to open up for you. Thank you, Nick. Anyone else to add? 
I think I would have to add that um, while you don't want to just run and get business cards, it is great to meet connections of people who might not align perfectly with you because you never know who they might know. Um, you always want those meaningful connections first, but if you talk to somebody and you've sounded them out and they're not maybe aligning with what exactly what you're looking for or needing, but they might not know somebody later down the line. So it's never a bad thing to meet more people, I would say. Um, you might They might not need what you have now or they might not be able to help you now, but they might stumble upon something and think of you later on and like, oh, here's a great resource that we just found. Um, I actually just did my biggest order uh, last week through a channel like that. I met a lady who was worked for a CPA firm, had nothing to do with flowers at all. And she met another lady who was looking for flowers and it was great. So I was really glad I didn't just blow that connection off. Um, so while it might not be meaningful in the moment, always keep them on your back pocket because you never know what they might bring to you. Um, for some don'ts, personally, I don't like people hounding me. So you meet somebody, you talk to them, you bring some mutual benefit to each other. But if they're not having that mutual benefit, you know, give them some space too. I know there are some people out there who are like, you network with somebody, you've got to talk to them constantly. And that's not always the best practice either. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Christy, anything to add? Um, I just want to add that um, going to the conferences has been very beneficial. Um, one of the things that you get to do is to make those connections with people. And so I always go with the intention of that. I may be sitting at the breakfast table with somebody who needs something that I run into somebody in the afternoon that does provide that service. And um, in doing so, then I have a list of resources that I can help um, others to be able to connect up. And those uh, business to business relationships um, don't always turn into you know big orders and sales in the beginning, um, but that's not what it's all about. It's connecting others um, to um, each other and then building those relationships. And out of that does um, come friendship and some business. And so it's always beneficial to go and talk to people who do something that you have no idea what they do. Um, I enjoy going and finding out what uh, people are doing to solve the world's problems. Thank you, Christy. Hey, Elvis, can I throw an alibi in there? Something that Absolutely. Emily brought up, which she's 100% right on. And, you know, meaningful might have been the wrong word that I chose. It's not transactional. Like, being meaningful, in my opinion, is you know, being genuine and honestly listening to that other person, even though if you're in completely different industries and they can't help each other out, like Emily hit it on the head, you never know where those conversations are going to go. So I just want to clarify that real fast. Thank you, Nick. And uh, talking about the networking and um, conferences, I understand you guys meet a lot of people and connection is very important. Uh, what I want to specify and uh, put emphasis on is follow up. Having important is a follow-up to you guys absolutely massive I, mean, I don't think there's any other way to put it you know whether it's a quick little email of, hey Elvis you know thanks for the conversation at this you know without an ask I think that follow-up is completely critical to having a successful meaningful non-transactional relationship I agree with uh, Nick on that as, all, as well, um, because when you walk away with that stack of business cards, uh, a lot of times the uh, I kind of put them away. But if um, I followed up with some of the people that I've talked to and they followed up with me, we're now connected, uh, usually through LinkedIn. But now I have a way to contact them easily, and I don't have to go back and look them up. So I always um, sit down the day after the conference and I go through everybody's business cards and I find them and I put them on LinkedIn because then later down the road when I need their service or I have a question related to their field, um, I have easy access to them. And so uh, that follow-up is important in um, you know, building those networks and building those uh, relations because as you grow in business, um, there's a lot of things that aren't related to your field, but you're going to come across uh, some things that you're going to need some help. And so it's nice to already have those relationships in place. Thank you. Emily, anything to add? Absolutely. Uh, I agree definitely wholeheartedly on that follow-up is very important. And speaking back to the last um, topic we were discussing, 
with follow up, it's great because they might have come across something but not remembered who exactly they needed that resource for. So when you say, hey, it was great meeting you. I'm great talking to you about X, Y, Z topic. They're like, ah, that's who it was for. So now, you know, you're not putting all the burden on them to help you out. And then vice versa, they'll be like, oh, hey, you know, this was something I was looking for. That follow up gives you another chance to make that connection even stronger than before. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's get back to, you know, starting a business. And, you know, as we know, like a starting a business can be uh, tough financially. And what would I like to ask you guys is to share what was those, some of your funding strategies as you were starting up? You know, what advice do you have for others as well? Nick, anything? Yeah, so I don't recommend our funding strategy at all, but it's what worked for us at the time. Is I took you know my family's little nest egg and we went all in on Battle Site. Um, we did receive, you know, we won some awards and some pitch competitions during the vetting process. We won a state grant for some technology transfer work that we were doing. Um, so I, I guess my biggest piece of advice is explore all your options. But you know, you walk into a, the way we did it, you know, we got venture capital offers that we eventually turned down, but we walked in a lot more credible in those conversations when we did need the growth capital and we considered venture capital because, you know, we did have everything on the line and we did, it wasn't just saying, Hey, we took somebody else's money and we have this idea and we're going to hope for the best. It was, you know, we really did have everything on the line, which like I said, probably not the best way to do it, but it's what we did and it worked for us. Thank you, Nick. Anyone else? Christy? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. We started out with Flow, and um, I worked um, a full-time job outside of uh, running a business when we got started. And um, while it was difficult and it was a slow start to business, uh, that was what I did for that additional security in in starting, and then once the, I was making more part time working in my business than I did working full time for someone else. That's really kind of when I made the switch over and really jumped in and um, really um, picked this business up off the ground and moved forward rapidly. And I don't know that. Um, I would have done it any different had I known anything more either. Uh, it was a learning process along the way, and I had to grow as a person as well as grow the business. And that was one of the things that um, I learned through this process. And so even though everybody's going to do something differently, uh, you can only do what you're ready to be able to do at the time. And uh, so start somewhere definitely and then just move forward thank you Christy Emily yes I was just gonna say I did something very similar to Nick as we took um, what little extra cash we had saved up and we invested it all in my business and then we just been growing organically whatever we make goes straight back into growing it so that's why I said that networking component so big because that's completely free and that's where our marketing and advertising comes from. Um, not every industry is gonna be that lucky to be able to just bootstrap it, but I think it does give you a sense of responsibility to making sure that what you do works because if you get somebody else's money, it's not quite as intense to make sure your money works for you. Um, but there are so many resources out there, like Nick mentioned, competitions, business plan competitions. Um, my husband actually used to own a business and. We did most of his funding through that, so it's a great way to get grant money. Um, and there are plenty of other, you know, easy to do uh, loan options that aren't traditional, like through banks. So those are all great ways to grow a business. Thank you, guys. And most of you have mentioned through bootstrapping as a way to go and having the skin in the game first, and through business plan competition. So I would like to focus because many there's like Emily said there's there's a lot of business plan competitions happening out there especially street shares and there are also IVMF hosts its annual 
you know, business plan competition. And through IBF, IBF programs, we also have business plan competition. So my question to you guys is, how do you prepare for those business plan competitions? Do you, do you need to have a strong business plan? Who do you go to see about it? And uh, what are some resources you use to prepare for business plan competition? And what advice do you have for others as well? I think knowledge is the biggest thing. And I've sat on some business plan competitions. And you can instantly tell, maybe not instantly, but you can tell fairly quickly who knows the ins and outs of their business. And honestly, that's what, right? I might not, you know, if I'm judging Emily's business plan competition, I know nothing about flowers besides I buy them when I screw up with my wife. But, you know, seeing her confidence and seeing the way she handles herself on stage and the fact that she knows her numbers and can educate me in a very short amount of time on the industry and her opportunity. I think that's the massive, you know, takeaway is, you know, confidence and knowing your stuff and being able to communicate that in an effective manner. Thank you, Nick. Anyone else? Christy? It's uh, not only knowing your business, it's where you at, where you are at, where you have been, and where you're going and moving forward. And um, without that, vision of what, where you're going, um, a lot of your business plan can get lost in the day-to-day -day details. And so um, in knowing, knowing your goals and, um, and knowing your business inside and out, where you've come from, and what you hope to achieve um, is the, the biggest piece in that. Thank you, Christy. Emily, anything to add? Uh, a couple things, yes. So the like Nick mentioned, your elevator pitch is huge. What somebody's going to know about you and your business is in that sixty to ninety seconds that you get. And so not only do you need to show your confidence in what you do and what you're trying to provide for people, but that you know where you're at in the market itself. So understanding what your market is and who your audience is is huge. Um, the other thing is if you're trying to get your to that point where you're presenting on stage and you've got to get past the actual business plan or how well is your business plan written, it's a little bit time intensive, but take it to traditional banks. They will nitpick your business plan from top to bottom and tell you what you did and didn't do well because they're looking to see how strong you are and if you know who your competitors are. Um, my husband took his business plan to, I think, 60 different banks and had 60 different people read it and I would never suggest that to anybody else, but that gave him great insight onto 60 different people's perspective who are going to be lending money. And that gave him a way to really tailor his business plan. So when he went to do these competitions, he was getting into the semifinals almost every single one that he was doing because he had taken the time to really tweak that business plan. So it worked perfectly and he knew the ins and outs of it. So when he got on stage in his elevator pitch, it was seamless so it's not only just knowing what you want to say and what your business is and where it wants to go but who your competitors are and what lenders are going to be looking for whether it's traditional lenders venture capitalists or just an uh, organization looking to give you a grant thank you guys we have some uh, questions from uh, online audience they say um, what did the ebv program offer you for your business over other resources out there? You know, EBV, in my opinion, is the only, you know, organization that battle sites aligned with. So I can't really speak to what else is out there. But uh, that framework gave us the foundation, you know, from every aspect, you know, there's some of those moments where it hits you in the face, like, oh my God, how did I not think of this? And why am I playing it? Kind of like Christy mentioned of, there's stuff we should be doing, but we don't know what that stuff is sometimes. And, you know, for myself and Battleside, that's really, you know, what it helped us kind of figure out where we are, what are the next steps. And sometimes, you know, we had a fairly decent, you know, foundation going into this, but we still learned, you know, so much of specific areas that we were kind of falling short on. And then the resources helped us to address those and move on to the next stage and then figure out what we were missing and, kind of the life cycle of you know where you are growing where you are growing continuation we've done that step and step by step with IVMF and all the resources that they provided really helped us thank you Nick anyone else 
Oh, yes. So I did look at other programs, and I participated in several other programs. And what I found was that the programs that I uh, was in were dealing in starting a business. Um, when you have an idea, what do you do with the idea? Who's your ideal customer? And those kind of things. And I was well beyond that. Um, when I started looking for that assistance in how do I grow my business and move forward. And so I found that the resources I was looking for weren't really there. And then after I was introduced to um, the IVMS, I found the, um, the EBV Accelerate program for businesses that had already been in business for five years and longer. And that was exactly what I was looking for. And so it, it was there. It was beyond the, you have an idea. And um, I had gone through several other courses, and it was the same thing over and over again. And I was really kind of getting frustrated and um, thinking that the resources I was looking for weren't really there. Um, but IVMF does have them, and they are there. Thank you, Christy. Emily, anything to add? I was just going to build off what Nick said about EVV being kind of the framework for um, getting your business going. It was great because, you know, you go to these small events where they're, you know, a few hours a day or once or twice a month, but where EVV was very consolidated. So if you had a question and you didn't think of it, you know, in the moment, you had eight other days that you could have came back and asked somebody that question or, you know, maybe you asked that question and they weren't the perfect person. Somebody EVV could get you aligned with one of the mentors that came in and offered their perspective on something to help you. And I think that's something that you don't get outside of these programs is because it's really set up to help match you with people you need in the moment. Um, I know here in Dallas, a lot of places run these events, you know, once or twice a month, but they don't really focus on you as an individual and EBV and IVMF is really about getting behind you as a person and getting your business going. Thank you guys. And uh, also IVMF has some uh, introductory uh, entrepreneurship programs such as Boost the Business, uh, Revise, Revise Ignite as well, and uh, EBVF. So for the earlier stages of entrepreneurs, uh, talking about the mentors that um, Emily has mentioned, we also have another question from our live audience. It says, how did did any of you guys uh, rely on a mentors, either up front or over time? So I still rely on mentors. Um, we've got, you know, the board of directors who kind of act as a mentor, but they're very focused on certain aspects of, you know, critical growth. But we also have a board of advisors. And some of these guys and, you know, gals have been on this board of advisors before Battlesite was even born in a very, you know, impartial or not impartial, informal kind of way, you know, for myself, per my personal growth. But then when I started to pull this business idea together, you know, a lot of those people stayed on and that team has only grown over, you know, the last couple of years. And, you know, some are paid, some are not paid, but every single one of them add tremendous value. So if you don't have a mentor, I think that's the number one thing you need to get before you put pen to paper. Thank you, Nick. Anyone else? Christy? And so one of the things that I learned that I should be doing was have a mentor. I didn't really have a mentor in my beginning stages. And um, our business, I think, struggled a little bit because of that and not having that mentor in place. And now I have uh, mentors and a board of advisors. And uh, that has been huge in um, business growth. And so like Nick said, that's a missing piece that I had, didn't have for years. Um, because I didn't know who I could talk to about what I was doing and what my plans were. And um, so getting that and having that has been, it, 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 it can put it towards how huge that has been. Uh, for business in the last year is getting those mentors in place and um, having someone to bounce those ideas um, off and um, and help uh, guide guide your thoughts and make your plans a little bit more clear than um, they are when you kind of are muddling through on your own. Thank you, Christy. Emily, anything to add? I'm going to build off Nick again. I think having the mentor is a lot of times people are trying to think it's just one person who comes in and helps lead you along. But like Nick mentioned, having multiple people is great. 
because everybody has their area of expertise. So if you can get a mentor that helps you with one object in your business, well, you get somebody else who you maybe, maybe it's marketing, you're struggling, you can get a mentor who's great with marketing and you have a mentor that helps you with your finances. That's great because then you have very specialized advice based on each area of your business that you're trying to work on. Um, he mentioned he's got a board that he works with and it doesn't even have to be something that formal. It's just people that you can turn to that are good in their field. And I think that's huge in anything you do, whether that's, you know, personal life or business. Thank you guys. We have a follow-up questions from one of our audience watching it live. He says, uh, EBV has helped propel your vision. Do you recommend this program for someone looking to partner with a franchise opportunity? So my first EBV class, there is uh, an amazing Lash Studio franchise. Hey, you know, I think all those foundation stages, you know, franchise brings in a lot of that foundation for you. But at the end of the day, you have to go execute on that foundation. And it really helps them create a path to go execute on that foundation that the franchise is bringing. And then even in that Accelerate program I did last week, there was a Papa Lock and Mr. Electric franchise. And I'm willing to bet those two gentlemen said they got just as much out of that program as, you know, us with, you know, I don't even, non-traditional, non-franchise businesses. So yeah, I definitely don't limit yourself to these programs. If you think you have to have an original idea, these franchise models, we all go through the same problems no matter what they, what the business is. So definitely take a look at them. Thank you, Nick. Anyone else? Christy and Vlad? I don't have any um, personal uh, uh, things that I can attest to for the franchise, but I do know that with the franchises, a lot of it is just that uh, basically you're given your standards of um, operations is what comes with that. But knowing what to do with that and how to drive your business forward and those other pieces that fit in, and uh, it's business is business. And so it definitely would make a difference into what you're doing forward um, because just a set of instructions for operations is not enough to make a successful business. Thank you, Christy. Emily, do you have anything to add? I would say all these programs are great for franchises as well because it teaches you things that you might not already know about business, even if you're looking at buying into something that somebody else has started because you still have to know how to run those day-to-day -day operations and how to structure that so that it'll make you money. So I don't feel like IVMF programs are only pigeonholed to people with original business ideas. I think it's a great place to learn anything you need to know about business. So whether you're you know, starting out with the original idea, getting on with a franchise, or you know, you're down the road, you know, like Christy said, several years into it, and you know, you're looking to expand or maybe change your business structure. There's so many resources here that are great for it. Thank you, Emily. We have a, another follow-up questions about mentors, and uh, it's asking, uh, how did you guys select your mentors, members of your board of directors, and uh, you know, like a the process of that. Yeah, so <clears throat> I guess there's like one of our mentors actually, you know, I went to when I was burnt out in my corporate life trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And he's like my life mentor, I guess. He's, you know, 20 years older than me. He's made some, you know, terrible mistakes in business and his personal life and kind of helping me make sure I don't make those same mistakes. And then, you know, we contracted out a financial guy when we were going through that venture capital firm. And we were able to build that meaningful relationship. And then, yeah, we actually ended up bringing him on board. And it's just, you know, I think I think it was Emily who was talking about you never know where those connections are going to go. You reach out to somebody to help you solve a problem or answer a question for you. And it, you never know where that's going to turn into. It might turn into that full-blown mentorship where you want to throw them on, you know, your board of advisors. You know, board of directors, I think, are completely different than the advisors. But, uh there's mentors everywhere. You probably have them in your life without putting that title on them. So maybe just kind of take an inventory of who you have in your life and you know, what, you know, value they provide on that, you know, philosophy and answering questions for you and, you know, 
turn it into something more formal. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Christy, anything to add? Uh, yes. And so I found um, a lot of my mentors to actually come through our local chamber of commerce. I got really active in our local chamber of commerce before I found IVMF. And that's where a lot of my mentors have come from. Um, that's where my again, um, my attorney, my banker, my um, uh, my insurance guy, um, and all of those relationships have come from. They've started there, and then they've turned into business relationships that have now turned into more than just business relationships into that um, um, mentor um, in in my life. And they are um, doing business in a similar area to over. Um, or where I also do business, and so that's been um, huge in um, that we're all in the same market, even though we all do different uh, things and have different services. Thank you, Christy. Emily, anything to add? I definitely think finding your mentors in the pool of people you network is huge. Um, back to that, you don't know where those connections will go. Um, some of my best mentors have been from people that I didn't expect it to be. Um, a guy who just got a CPA uh, certification a few months ago introduced me to his head tax consultant for their company. And he wanted nothing from us as a business. He was just open to giving us suggestions. And on the surface, you don't think that that would be somewhere you find a mentor, but it's been huge for us as a small business with a lot of the tax changes recently. So leaning heavily on that and people who are just genuinely out there to help you and not everybody's looking for something in return but the, these some of the, your best mentors are people who want to help other people just be better um so don't feel like your mentors have to be somebody with a huge title or somebody that you know that you have to you know get in with but just people that are already in your network who are around you can lead you some of the best mentors you'll ever have Thank you, guys. And uh, IBMF also has resources as available for free mentoring as well through American Corporate Partners and uh, eMentor. And also SBA, Small Business Administration Offices, offer face-to-face -face mentoring as well through SCORE, Small Business Development Center, Women's Business Center, and other their offices as well. You Like uh, Christy has mentioned, Chamber of Commerce, your local Chamber of Commerce is full of individuals and uh, people that could become your mentors. Uh, I want to, um, Christy mentioned something that is very important in uh, starting phases of business is built-in, you know, banker insurance, you know, accountant and lawyer, right? So I want to guy ask you guys, how it is, how important it is to have your bail team on as you start your business and what advice do you have for others looking to, you know, establish their own bail team? So our team came 100% from networking, right? We ended up sitting at a table at an event with a guy who turns out to be like the number one M&A type attorney at the time that we were going through venture capital um, due diligence. So we ended up hiring him. And then banker, we honestly found through IVMF, there's you know one bank in particular that does, you know, very supportive of the program. We want to be very supportive of the program. So supporting that bank and, our way is another way to support IVMF. Uh, what were the other two? I'm sorry, I kind of spaced. Insurance and uh, legal. Uh, so, yeah, legal. We hired a big national firm, so we've got kind of all the access, but it came from a networking table. Uh, insurance, I won't lie, we're completely screwing up right now and kind of going through that whole process and interviewing a couple new insurance people right now. So that's on our to-do list of things to wrap up, but... Also, both of these people that we're talking to came from, one came from the Chamber of Commerce and one came from another networking event. Thank you, Nick. Christy, anything to add? I just want to add that um, for us, that insurance and that legal piece was very important when we started uh, business. And um, uh, just to make sure that we were following um, all of the the laws and our contracts were legal and um, in all of that and um, so I have a great um, a great attorney who has read through every piece of uh, document uh, that we have in business um, I mean down to our um, 
you know, uh, just our cell phone policy for for our uh, team. And uh, so without them and uh, getting all of that uh, started in the beginning, it would have been a very difficult struggle. Thank you, Christy. Emily, anything? Uh, we're still building our team, but most of who we already have um, involved, it came from networking 100% as well. Um, personally, I just feel like that gives you an insight on who they are as a person before you trust them with anything that has to do with your business. You can get into situations where you think somebody's great just simply based on recommendation, but you don't know them personally. And it turns out to be somewhat of a detriment to your business. Um, also on the personal note on that side. But so I think like Nick said, sitting down with the people you talk with and finding out what they do and then seeing how you can maybe integrate them into your group. So whether that's, you know, as mentors or as your bail team is huge opportunity for you. Thank you guys. And Nick had brought up a good question in the conversation. So we know a lot of entrepreneurs, we always talk about the success and the, you know, how a good day doing. My question to you guys is, um, what if you guys have ever experienced any failures as you were starting your business and um, what have you done and what would you have done differently right now knowing that you know you, you like mistakes you made and things like that it's funny we were talking about this last week and you know we've made plenty of mistakes but it's hard to kind of classify them as failures because we made a decision, we went out and executed on that decision, didn't pan out the way we thought it was going to be, and we didn't let it stop us. We continued on just a different path. So calling mistakes failures, I think is, I don't know, probably not the best way to do it. But you know, what? the one thing that really stuck out as a mistake at Battleside is we ended up turning down that outside capital, banking on the fact that we just won this, you know, fairly large Air Force contract and that was over a year ago, and we still haven't seen a dollar from that contract. So just kind of some of the growing pains on that financial growth that we're not as far along as we thought we were going to be because that contract hasn't come in yet. I guess it'd probably be the biggest you know, mistake, but I definitely don't regret turning down the VC dollars, so. Thank you, Nick, I totally agree. It's more of a like learning, you know, bad than mistakes and failures, but you know, Christy, do you have anything to add? I just want to add off of uh, same thing uh, we, that um, it, even if I knew what I knew now, I would probably still go through uh, and make the decisions that I made at the time uh, based off of the information that I had. And I've definitely learned from it and grown from it. And um, the business that we have today wouldn't be what we have today without um, those, um, you know, mistakes that happened that um, made us better. Thank you, Christy. And to add, Emily? I definitely think that it's a learning process from start to finish, but I don't feel that failures, I mean, you asked us if we could go back and change things, knowing what we know now, if we would. And I wouldn't either, just simply because I don't feel like I would have grown as a owner and entrepreneur if I tried to go back and change those things, as they've made my business and really helped guide my business to where I wanted to go. Cause I had a great idea when I started and knew what I wanted to do, but it was very broad in the sense. And so these mistakes or failures or trip ups or, you know, however you want to classify them to yourself have really helped me focus in on exactly what I'm looking to do and bring in those types of people I want. Um, because if I hadn't made those mistakes, I would have just kept going on the same path. Or if I had avoided that one mistake, I probably would have made that mistake later on in my business and it could have been a much larger problem than it was early on. So I think, you know, it's hard as a startup, it's hard your first years because, you know, a lot of times you're putting in a lot of sweat equity, you're putting in a lot of time, you're not seeing the returns that you were hoping you were, but it really sets you up for later on so that when you make those mistakes, you know how to do it better later on so that you're not losing out the millions of dollars that you could potentially be earning instead. Thank you guys so much. This was very uh, fun panel. I have just one more question for you guys as we have a few minutes left. Uh, and that question is, what is one piece of practical advice you would give to someone starting out right now? 
The best practical advice I've ever been given, and I think that I can give, is just to go out and do, right? If you've got a great idea, don't overanalyze it. Go out and try it. See what happens. Just, just do. Thank you, Nick. Christy? Um, the biggest uh, piece of advice that I was given was that um, you don't know what you don't know, and uh, that as, that life is uh, continued learning. And so um, starting in whatever you do, you will continue to grow from there. And you're not going to know the answers to all the questions, and you're not going to have all the answers when you start, and that's okay. Thank you, Christy. Emily? I think the biggest piece of advice that I've ever been given is that when you start, that there isn't any foolproof blueprint for you to go off of. If you're an analytical person and you need data like me, start your business there. If you're an emotional person, you connect with people, start your business there. It doesn't matter what type of person you are, what type of business you are, start it and start it where you are at. Don't try to, you know, start your business and be off competing with Bill Gates and the Rothschilds. Start where you're at now and who you are as a person now, and you'll be able to grow your business in a way that is true to what you're trying to do and to who you are as a person. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your time as you took time to be our panelist for today's uh, National Small Business Week webinar. And uh, as we celebrate this National Small Business Week, and I just want to remind the audience out there that our next VetNet webinar will be on May 23rd uh, with uh, America Corporate Partners as they introduce their new um, spouse mentoring program. And um, also, I just want to remind you, everybody that registered for this event will receive a, a, a recorded link and will be uh, will receiving a short survey that you can guys you know fill out and let us know how we did and what other future VetNets you would, you would like to see. Again, to our panelists, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and uh, have a good day. See you next time.